Good morning to each and everyone. So today we are going to talk about the DLE7 commercial cooking. Now let's go on or let's start first by introducing myself. So I am Ayala Ray E. Balason. I am a teacher one from Bot National High School, Tanawan City, Batangas. So I will be handling TLE grade 7. Now let's start with the lesson 1, use and maintain kitchen tools and equipment. Now, class in this module, this module was designed and written with you in mind. It is here to help you master the cookery. The scope of this module permits it to be used in many different learning situations. The language used recognizes the diverse vocabulary of level of students. The lessons are arranged to follow the standard sequence of the course, but the order in which you read them can be changed to correspond with the textbook you are now using. Now, the module is divided into three lessons, namely, Lesson 1, the uses and maintain kitchen tools and equipment. Lesson 2, perform mensuration and calculation. Number 3 is practice occupational safety and health. But now, since we are in our week one, we are going to talk about the lesson one, use and maintain kitchen tools and equipment. Now, after going through this module, you are expected to identify the kitchen tools, equipment according to their use, classify the types of appropriate cleaning tools and equipment based on their uses, Select various types of chemicals for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment and paraphernalia. Clean and sanitize kitchen tools and equipment following manufacturer's instruction. Measure ingredients act properly. Calculate the cost of production of a given recipe and choose the type of hazard and risk that is common in workplace. Explain the importance of occupational health and safety. Now, class, first I want you to get your intermediate paper or your answer sheet. Now let's go on with what's new. Now, cookery. Cookery will help you learn the basic knowledge one has to acquire in cooking. Now let's begin by answering the following question, okay? Now let's write. Don't forget to write your name and section, okay? Now let's have number one. What is your favorite Filipino dish? Okay, so we all know we have a lot of Filipino dishes. It can be adobo, tinolang manok, sinigang, pritong isda, okay, whatever. What is your favorite? Okay, next. Alright, number two. Do you know how to cook your favorite dish? Alam niyo po ba kung paano itulutuin? If yes, just write number two, yes. And if no, just write number two, no. Okay? Okay, good job. Next, let's have number three. Now, I want you to list five tools and equipment used in making this dish. You can ask for the help of your family member who usually does the cooking at your home. For example, class, your mom is the one who always cook. And your favorite dish is uh, adobo. Now, mom or nanay, ano po ang mga ginagamit nyo na tools para lutuin ang adobo? So, ang mami nyo can say, gumagamit sila ng kaserola, sandok, okay, gumagamit sila ng uh, kutsilyo, gumagamit sila ng sangkalan or chopping board. So, you can write at least five tools and equipment, okay? Alright, good job. Now, let's have here, continue answering the following questions using the information you have gathered. Now, let's go on with number four. Among the tools and equipment that you wrote, those are five. The question number three, which one do you know how to use? Alin sa limang inilista mo sa answer mo sa number three, ang kaya mong, um, kaya mong gawin or kaya mong gamitin? For example, kaya mong gumamit ng knife. And then you can write number four, knife. Okay? But please observe safety while using your knife. Okay, next, let's have number five. Can you describe in one or two sentences how to use it? Okay, for example, is knife. Paano mo gamitin ang kutsilyo? Okay, you just indicate your answer on number five. Next, number six. If you were to cook your favorite dish, do you think it is important to use the right tools and equipment? Number six, you can only ask or you can only answer yes or no. And the next one, we have number seven, why? 
Okay, bakit? Bakit importante na alam ninyo kung paano gamitin ng tama ang tools and equipment? Okay, wow, good job for that class. So, you are already done with the part one. Okay, now let's go on. We are going to have the learning competency. We have the learning objective number one is to utilize the appropriate kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Identify the types of tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Classify the types of appropriate cleaning tools and equipment based on their uses. Okay. Now, class, let's have here our pretest. Okay. Now, please write on your answer sheet letter D. Okay. Please don't don't forget to have this one. Okay. Wag ka kalimutan na lagyan pretest. Lesson 1. Okay, now directions. Read the statements carefully and choose the letter that best describes the statement. Write the answer on a separate sheet of paper. Okay, now you can just write only the letter. No need to, to copy all of this. Okay, you don't need to copy this all. Letter only. Okay, just the letter itself. Okay, letter only. Now, let's have number 1. What tools are the most popular, lightweight, and attractive, and less expensive materials of kitchen utensils and equipment? Letter A, glass. Letter B, stainless. Letter C, aluminum. Letter D, rubber and plastic. Okay, good job. Next, number two. It is, it is a more complicated tools that may refer to a small electrical appliance. A, tool. B. Material, C. Equipment, D. Paraphernalia. Okay, now let's go on to number three. It is used to grate shred, slice, and separate foods. Letter A. Knife, letter B. Grater, letter C. Kitchen shears, or letter D. Sharpening steel. Okay, now let's go on with number four. This is a must for all types of kitchen tasks from peeling, carving, often referred as cook's tool. A, knife, B, grater, C, kitchen shears, or D, sharpening steel. Okay, now let's have here the next one. We have number five. What measuring tool is used to measure solid and dry ingredients? A. Ruler B. Measuring spoons C. Liquid measuring cup or D. Measuring cup for dry ingredients Okay, now class, in question number 5, uh, this one, number 5, it can have two answers, okay? It can have at least two answers, this one. So, you can write either, either the two letters, okay? All right. Now, that is only for number five. Okay, good job for that. Now, let's go on with the next one. Okay, now let's have number six. What are used to measure smaller quantities of ingredients? A, ruler. B, measuring spoon. C, liquid measuring cup. D, measuring cup for dry ingredients. Okay, next, let's have number seven. What cleaning tools is used to remove the contaminants of any tools and equipment? A, sponge, B, broom, C, mop, or D, scrubbing foam? Okay, very good. Next, let, number eight. What special coating applied to the inside of some pots and pans that help food from not sticking to the pan? A. Glass, B. Teflon, C. Stainless steel, or D. Aluminum. Alright, next, let's have number 9. What cleaning materials is characterized by readily absorbing water and becoming? A. Broom, B. Mop, C. Foam, or D. Scrubbing foam. Now, class, if the answer is not in the choices, you can write the answer or you can write number 9, what answer? Okay, or if you think that the answer is here in the uh, choices, you can write, for example, number 9, letter E. Okay, or number 9, letter A, 
Number nine, letter B. Okay, but only one answer. Next, let's have number 10. A vegetable strainer that is essential for various tasks, from cleaning vegetables to straining pasta or tin contents? A, sifter. B, strainer. C, colander. Or D, mixing bowl. Okay, now, class, we are already done with your pretest. Okay, please make sure na kumpleto ang inyong sagot from number 1 up to number 10. Okay, again, class, we... Uh, we conducted pretest so that I can know if you have knowledge on our lesson. And then after this um, week one module, you can have your post test. Okay? Next, let's have here. Let's go on with our lesson proper. Now, let's have lesson one. Different types of kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Okay, class. Commercial cooking is cooking for other for sale. Restaurant, nursing home, boarding school, food manufacturing, etc. It is the result of a man's demand for food that is readily available and fast-changing phase of his or her lifestyle. Any cook should be familiar with the correct utensils, device, and equipment in the kitchen. It is important to consider several things and not only the price when buying them. The job of cooking requires specific tools, utensils, and equipment for proper and efficient preparation of food. Each piece has been designed to accomplish a specific job in the kitchen. The tools, utensils, and equipment are made of different materials, each having certain advantage and disadvantage. From this point, you are heading into a meaningful activities and learning encounters. Complete the exercises and answer the worksheets to experience lifelong practical learning that awaits at the end of this module. Enjoy your journey! Okay, now let's go on again with letter D, which is what's in. Okay, now I want you to write letter D, what's in. Now class, we have your two picture, picture A and picture B. Now, directions. At the picture, on the separate sheet of paper, list down all the tools and equipment you can see in the picture A. For example, class, what can you see in picture letter A? Okay, what tools and equipment do you see? You will list it down here on 1, 2, 3, and 4. All right. Next, picture letter B. What can you see in picture letter B? Picture letter B, it has a very dirty kitchen, <laughs> so we need to clean them. Now, class, in picture letter B, what are the cleaning tools do you need to clean this dirty kitchen? Now, you are going to list down here the tools or cleaning tools that you need for you to clean this dirty kitchen. Okay? Did you understand? Okay. Now, I want you to do that. I will give you at least a minute to do um, activity 2.1 analyzing picture. Your timer starts now. Okay. Time is up, class. Okay, so you can go back with that one later. You can review your answers. Okay, now class, let's go on with lesson number, learning objective one, which is utilize appropriate kitchen tools, equipment, and paraphernalia. Identify the types of tools, equipment, and paraphernalia, use of kitchen tools, utensils, and equipment. Okay, now let's go here at the cooking materials. So what are the cooking materials? We have aluminum. Okay, all right. We have their stainless steel. Okay, so we have their aluminum, stainless steel. We have glass. Okay, those are the cooking materials. Another one is... The cast iron. Another one is the Teflon. 
And the last one is the plastic and hard rubber. Now, let's talk about aluminum class, okay? Now, when we talk about aluminum, it is one of the mostly used in the kitchen, okay? So, this is the very common because sa bahay natin, meron kayong makikita at makikita na aluminum. Next, it is most popular because it is lightweight, okay? So, hindi siya uh, masyadong mabigat. Lightweight lamang po siya. Tama lamang ang kanyang... Bigat. And that's when it is attractive, right? Because it looks like a silver one, kaya medyo attractive siyang tingnan. And of course, aluminum is also less expensive. And since this is soft metal, the lighter gauges will dent the scratches easily, making the use utensils unusable. Turns dark when used with alkali. Alkalis or alkalines, okay? So that is aluminum. Next, we have the stainless steel. So, the stainless steel is the most popular material used for tools and equipment, but it is more expensive, right? So, pag sinabi natin stainless, medyo mahal siya. Next, let's have the glass. Okay, now when we talk about the glass, it is used for salad making or dessert. Common din nakikita natin siya pag fiesta. Ano? And it is great care because it's needed kasi siya ay babasagin. Okay, and the next one, we have the cast iron. So, I think that the cast iron, medyo kulay itim siya. It is durable but must be kept oiled to avoid rusting. Okay, and the next one is the Teflon. So, the Teflon is a commonly medyo expensive. Ano? It has a special coating kasi. And it will not stick. Hindi nag stick ang isang niluluto sa Teflon. Now, how are we going to care of the cooking wares? After using any cookware, they must be allowed to cool before washing and soaking to prevent accidental burns. Hindi natin dapat uh, babasay na agad ng tubig after na after natin magluto sa mga cooking wares. Why? Kasi po makakasira ito sa ating mga cooking wares. So, kailangan palamigin muna natin siya at of course, kailangan linisin ng tuyong basahan. Okay? Now, let's go on with the kitchen tools. Okay, the first kitchen tool is the can opener. It's used to open a food container. We have this one. We have the colanders called the vegetable strainer, which is essential also for draining. And of course, we have the cutting boards or chopping boards, okay, used to um, cut. And of course, we have there the funnels are used to fill jars made of various sizes of stainless steel, aluminum, or plastic. And next one, we have the garlic press. It's a kitchen tool which is specifically designed for the purpose of pulping the garlic. We have, of course, the graters. Okay, it is used to grate shred. Okay, grate carrots, grate cheese, grate cabbage. Okay, next one, let's have here the kitchen shears. So, they are practical for opening food packages, cutting or striping, remove labels, etc. And of course, we have here the potato masher. It is used for mashing, of course, the potatoes. That's why it is called potato masher. Okay, and the next one we have there. We have the rotary egg beater. It is used for beating small amount of eggs or beater. The beater should be made of stainless steel. And also, we have the scraper, a rubber or silicone tools used to blend or scrape the food from the bowl. Okay, so we have there the scraper also used in the flattening or leveling the measuring cups and spoon. We have the serving spoon. It's very common. And of course, the serving tongs. Okay, serving spoon, serving tongs. Next one, let's just have your spatula. It is used to level off the ingredients. Ano? So, spatula is used to level the measuring cup and spoons. And of course, we have there the spoons. We have the temperature scale. It is used to measure the heat intensity. Kung gaano kainit ang niluluto. And of course, we have the whisk for blending and mixing or whipping eggs. Of course, we have the wooden spoon. These are used to have um, small cookings. Okay, and next, let's have the measuring tools. Okay, this is very common. We have the measuring cup for liquid ingredients. We have here the household scales or timbangan in Tagalog. We have there the scoopers. 
Uh, okay, scoopers or dippers. Okay, used for filling ice cream. And of course, we have the measuring spoon. And let's talk about the kinds of knives according to their uses. Now we have there the French knife. So French knife is used to... French knife is commonly called a chef's or chief's knife or used for to chop, dice, or means. Food heavy knives have a saber or flat grain. So in our home, the very common knife is the French knife. Of course, we have the fruit and salad knife. It is used to prepare vegetables and some fruits. Okay, so as you can see in the picture, there are um, some different colors, a colorful knife. Okay, next one, let's have... The kitchen knives, often referred to as a cook or chef's tool, it is used. It is used to to all types of kitchen, such as peeling an onion, slicing carrots, carving or roasting a turkey. And of course, we have the citrus knife. It has have sided blade and serrated edges. It is used to section the citrus. Okay, now let's have here the paring knife is used to core, peel, and section fruits. And of course, the vegetable peeler, which is the very common, used to peel. And now let's go on with the equipment. The very common, we have the refrigerators. I don't need to explain that one. <laughs> we also have the oven. Ano? So, kung saan nagbibake, we need the oven. And next, let's just have here the microwave oven used for heating. Okay? So, heating only is its purpose. And now, let's have the blenders. So, the blenders is used to blend, of course. Okay, now, class, how are we going to care of the kitchen tools and equipment? Now, any kitchen tools and equipment will last long if given proper care. Okay? Kahit naman mga simpleng bagay lang, kahit sarili mong sapatos, o notebook, o libro, kapag inalagaan mo, yun ay magtatagal. Ano? Now, let's have here, the, sto the stove, sink, and cabinet should be cleaned and sanitized regularly. The cabbage can, sh uh, can should be kept covered, cleaned, and emptied often. Small tools and equipment such as paring and butcher knives, kettles, Pots and other tools should receive regular care by cleaning and sanitizing, okay? Just like the other ones, kapag ka ang isang pan or ang isang pinagprituhan ay malsebo, ano ang ginagawa natin? Pinapag, binabantuan natin siya ng mainit na tubig para matanggal ang kanyang sebo. Okay, next one. So, be sure to air dry them before storing. Ano, hindi kailangan na pagkabasa, saka na lang itataob. So, dapat siya ay pinupunasan. Okay, so, now let us have here the next one, class. Let's have your answer sheet or your pad paper one more time. Now, let's have a self-check 1.1, where do I belong? Now, directions. Identify and classify 10 utensils and equipment in any of the following materials you have read. Okay. Now, class, I've discussed to you the different tools and equipment. Now, isusulat nyo po dito, anong tools and, anong tools and equipment po kaya ang may aluminum? For example, um, aluminum pans. Okay, so I will put here pans. Okay, next, stainless. Ano kaya ang tools and equipment na stainless? I can have your tongs. Diba? Merong mga tongs na stainless. Now, how about glass? Ano kaya ang, ano kaya po ang ano, tools and equipment na glass? Okay, so you can have their measuring cup. Diba? Diba ang measuring cup ay isang ay isang example ng a uh, glass. Okay. Next, Teflon. Of course, Teflon meron ding pans na Teflon. Now, plastic and hard rubber. Uh, it can be chopping board. Right? Okay. So, again, uh, when we answer the activity or the self-check, or the self-check 1.1, I need 10 utensils. I repeat class, 10 utensils. Okay? So, pwedeng 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, another batch here. Okay? So, this is 1 point, 1 point, 1 point, 1 point, and 1 point. 
Okay? Okay. Now, class, let's go on with the use of kitchen materials, utensils, and equipment. Okay. Now, let's have here this one. Okay. Now, let's first with the Cookie Re-Exploratory course, we have the learning outcome number two, which is a select and use chemicals for cleaning and sanitizing kitchen equipment and utensils. Clean and sanitize equipment and utensils according to manufacturer's instruction and safety store cleaned equipment in the designated position and area. Okay. Now, we have here the next one. Okay, we have their girl cleaning. <laughs> okay, now class, we have your small quotations. Everyone has to use the kitchen and let's keep it nice. Please clean up after yourself. So the kitchen rules is if you empty it, fill it. If you dirt it, clean it. If you spill it, wipe it. If you open it, close it. If you cook it, Share it. Ano ang hindi kayo lamang kakain? Kailangan ay isinishare natin siya sa ibang tao. Okay po? Klaro. Alright. Now, let's have here the kitchen. Okay. The very messy kitchen. Okay. And let's turn our kitchen into just like that one. Okay. So, when your environment is clean, you feel happy, motivated, and of course, you are healthy. Okay, now let's have here the care of kitchen tools and equipment. Now, any kitchen tools and equipment will last long if you give it proper care. So, the stove, sink, and cabinet should be cleaned and sanitized regularly. The garbage can should be kept covered, cleaned, and emptied often. So, since hindi kayo pumapasok sa school ngayon, pwede nyo siyang gawin sa bahay. Ano? So, dapat malinis ang paligid. A clean place is a... Safe place. Ano? Kasi ang kitchen, dyan tayo nagluluto. Kaya dahil natin siyang palaging linisin. Now, let's talk about care of kitchen tools and equipment. So, small tools and equipments will also be take, take good care. Ano? Kailangan lagi siyang nililinis at sinasanitize. Kasi nga po, palagi natin siyang ginagamit. Okay? So, the use of vinegar added to water is very good disinfectant and stain grease remover. But be sure to air dry them because storing because moist utensils will attract cockroaches and web shelves can develop this agreeable odor. And you don't like that because I don't like that in my kitchen. Okay? Especially in our school. Now, let's talk about the chemicals used in cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. Okay, we have cleaning. What is cleaning, teacher? Cleaning is the process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface such as dish, glass, or cutting boards. Cleaning is done with a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. Okay, so the right cleaning agent must be selected because not all cleaning agents can be used on food contact surfaces. A food contact surface is surface equipment or utensils that food normally comes into contact. Okay? Alright. Now, class, let's go on with the next one. For example, glass cleaners, some metal cleaners, and most bathroom cleaners cannot be used because they might leave an unsafe residue on the food contact surface. So, the label should be indicated if the product can be used for food contact surface. So, kailangan ay may label. Kasi hindi nyo pwedeng gamitin ang panglinis sa CR at ililinis sa plato. Mali iyon, ha? Dapat po ay kung anong panglinis sa kitchen, yun din ang pang kitchen. Now, let's talk about the cleaning compounds. We have the detergent. So, uh, this is very common. We have the detergent soap, powder, cleaners, acid, volatile solvent, and abrasive. Okay, what are the common detergents? Tide, Ariel, and uh, so those are the common detergents that we have. We have the Surf, ayan. So, meron tayong iba't-ibang brand ng detergent. Now, let's have solvent cleaners. So, commonly referred as degreasers, used for service where grease has burned on. Ovens and grills are examples of areas that will frequent degreasing. So, ang degreasers ay panglinis sa mga... Ovens and grills kapag kami mga greases na siya. Okay? Klaro tayo sa solvent cleaners. Next, we have 
the acid cleaners. It is used for periodically in removing mineral deposits and other soil that detergents cannot eliminate such as scale in washing machines and steam tables, lime up building, builds and this washing machines and rust on shelving. For example, phosphoric acid, nitric acid, etc. These products vary depending on the specific purpose of the product. So, acid dito. So, kailangan we should be careful in using the acid cleaners. Okay? Next, we have the abrasive. Abrasives are generally used to remove heavy accumulations of soil that are this difficult to remove with detergent, solvent, and acid. So, this product must be carefully used to avoid damage to the surface being cleaned. So, a pinaka-strong na panglinis ay abrasive. Okay? And now we have the other chemicals used in cleaning and or sanitizing the kitchen and equipment. We have ammonia, dishwashing liquid, chlorine, carbolic acid, zimsen, disinfectants, and of course we have the soap. Okay? Alright, now the difference between cleaning and sanitizing. Cleaning removes food and other types of soil from a surface such as countertop or plate. While sanitizing, it removes the number of pathogens on the clean surface to save level. Okay, aulitin ko class ha, dito sa part na ito. Pag sinabi natin cleaning, nililinis mo lang siya. Wala na siyang kalat. Pero pag sinabi natin sanitizing, yung mga dumi na hindi natin nakikita, ay nalilinis din through sanitizing. Ano? So, ano yung mga sanitizing na sinatawag natin? So, meron tayong mga sanitizing agents. O, halimbawa na lang natin sa kamay. Madumi ang kamay mo. Tapos, ay hinugasan mo ng tubig. Malinis na. Pero, the bacteria and germs that cannot be seen by your naked eye is still there. So, what you're going to do is to sanitize your hands. So, you can put some alcohol on your hand. And that is an example of Sanitizing. Okay? Claro tayo. Okay, good job. Now, let's go on with the next one. We have sanitizing is done using heat, radiation, or chemicals. Heat and chemicals are commonly used as a method for sanitizing in a restaurant, radiation room used. The item to be sanitized must first be washed properly before it can be properly sanitized. Some chemical sanitizers such as chlorine and iodine react with food and soil and so will be less effective on a surface that has not been properly Clean. Okay, just like what I've explained to you earlier. So, sanitizing ito yung mga bacteria and germs that we cannot see. Now, let's go on with the sanitizing agents or sanitizing method. We have the heat method. Ano, ito yung binabandian natin. Diba? Binabandian natin ang isang surface. For example, there are three methods. We have steam, hot water, and hot air. Hot water is most common method sa mga restaurant wherein binubuhusan natin yung mga floors. So, just like also now, we're having our COVID-19 pandemic. So, ito yung isa sa ginagamit na pagsasanitize. Binabandian natin kasi mas namamatay ang germs sa may init. Okay pa? Ayan. So, that is the heat method. Next, we have the chemicals. So, the chemicals that are approved as a sanitizers are chlorine, iodine, quaternary, ammonium. Now, teacher, what are those? So, when we talk about concentration, it is the presence of too little sanitizer will result in an inadequate reduction of harmful microorganisms. Too much can be toxic. Lahat naman ang sobra ay masama. Ano? So, when we talk about concentration or we are having only just a little sanitizer. Okay, next, we have the temperature. Temperatures generally chemical sanitizer work best in water that is 55 degree Fahrenheit to 13 degree Celsius and 120 degree Fahrenheit or 49 degree Celsius. Okay, next, um, I'm talking about the heat on the temperature. Next, let's have the contact time. In order for the sanitizers to kill harmful microorganism, the cleaned item must be in contact with the sanitizer, either heat or approved chemical for the recommended length of time. So, ang isang sanitizers, makakatanggal siya ng bacteria, pero may oras siya. Hindi pwedeng buong maghapon, buong magdamag, ay nandun siya sa inyong nililinis. So, kailangan after a certain hour or a certain minute, hugasan na. Okay? Next, let's have sanitizer testing. Every restaurant must have the appropriate testing kit to measure chemical sanitizer concentration. To accurate test the strength of sanitizing solution, one must first determine which chemical is being used, chlorine, iodine, or quaternary ammonium. Test kits are not interchangeable, so check with your chemical supplier to be certain that you are using the correct kit. 
The proprietor's kit must then be used throughout the day to measure chemical sanitizer concentration. Ano? So, sa sanitizer testing ay hindi lang basta nakakita kayo sa mall ng sanitizer, yun na yun. So, there are a lot of process. Merong mga uh, right amount of sanitizers. Now, what we have here is the advantages and disadvantage of different chemicals. We have the chlorine. The contact time of chlorine is only 7 seconds. Its advantage is effectively on a wide variety of bacteria, highly effective, not affected by hard water, and generally inexpensive. Okay, now what is its disadvantage? It is corrosive and irritating to skin. Effectiveness decreases Decreases with increasing pH of solution, deteriorates during the storage and when exposed to light, dissipates rapidly, loses activity in the presence of organic matter. So we are very familiar with chlorine sa swimming pool. Ano? Yun kasi ang masasabi niyo when we talk about chlorine. Yes, chlorine kasi is um, nakakalinis at nakatanggal siya ng bacteria in water. But then it's a uh, common disadvantage is na it's irritating to skin. So pagka medyo matapang ang chlorine sa isang pool, mapapansin niyo na parang nangangati yung balat niyo. Ano? Because it's really irritating. So so that is the chlorine. Next, let's have the iodine. Its contact time is 30 seconds. It forms brown color that indicates strength. Not affected by hard water. Less irritating to skin than chlorine. Activity not lost rapidly in the presence of organic matter. Effectiveness, it's disadvantage. Effectiveness decreases greatly with an increase in pH. Should not be used in water that is at 120 Fahrenheit or hotter. And might discolor equipment and surfaces. Okay? So, um, kung mapapansin nyo, si iodine kasi uh, hindi siya kagaya ng chlorine na medyo matapang. So, light lang siya. And it is less irritating to our skin rather than chlorine. Okay? Okay. Good job. Next, we have... Okay, hold on. Which we have the quaternary ammonium compound. Now, this one is non-toxic and odorless, colorless, non-corrosive, non-irritating, stable to heat, and relatively stable in presence of organic matter. It's active over the wide pH range. So, its disadvantage is slow destruction of some microorganisms not compatible with some detergents and hard water. Okay, so that is the quaternary Ammonium compound. Okay, next we have here. Now, there are three steps needed to effectively clean and sanitize the utensils. What are those? The first one is washing, sanitizing, and drying. Always remember this three. First, you're going to wash, next you will sanitize, and then eat dry. Kahit sa unkey pumunta, palagi yung tatandaan ang three steps na ito. Washing, sanitizing, and drying. Okay? Alright. Now, a dishwasher is very effective at sanitizing if it has a hot wash and drying cycle. If you do not have a dishwasher, you will need to sanitize in a sink using a chemical sanitizer or very hot water. Now, if you're using a chemical sanitizer such as sodium hypochlorite or quaternary ammonium-based solution, ensure that it can be safely used for sanitizing cooking utensils. Ano? So, kahit ano pa man ang gamitin ninyo na sanitizing compounds or methods, you should always be careful. But the very common sa atin naman is the dishwashing soap or the detergents. Ano? Okay. Next, let's have here the next one. If you are washing off an, ex an event being held outdoors, Make sure you have access to plenty of hot water. If hot water is not available, disposable eating and drinking utensils should be used and enough cooking utensils should be provided upon at the duration of the event so that this washing is much be great or much be good. Now, let's talk about this one. Cleaning your kitchen regularly is important not only to keep it looking its best, but also to remove all the germs and bacteria that accumulate regular in your kitchen area. And of course, you don't want to have the COVID-19 pandemic or you don't want to have the COVID-19 disease. So that's why cleaning and sanitizing your kitchen will be a good and great practice. Okay? Alright. Now let's have here the next one, class. 
we have the instructions on how you're going to clean your premises. So, of course, mga walisin yung kitchen nyo. Kailangan ay yung mga countertops nyo ay yung pupunasan. Tapos, you will remove the built-in yung mga malalagyan. Next one, uh, you are going to mix the one, uh, one gallon warm water into bucket and half cup of white sugar and one tablespoon of dish soap. Now, you will dip your mop into that one, into your bucket, and then you will put it on your floors. So, that is one of the good cleaning um, practice. Okay? And the next one, we have... Make an all-purpose cleaner in a spray bottle. Combine three cups of warm water with one half cup white soap, white vinegar, and one tablespoon of dish soap. So as you can see, palaging vinegar. Ano? Yes, actually nakakalinis kasi talaga ang vinegar. Kahit sa mga toilet bowls, nakaputi siya. Next, let's have the spray with the solution to kitchen surfaces and wipe off with a damp cleaning rag. Ano? So kailangan siya ay ilalagay nyo at patutuyuin. Lagay, linis, kudkod, at patuyuin ng maayos. Okay, and the last one, put some small containers without a lid with one half cup each of baking soda. Place this around your kitchen to absorb the odor. So, ang baking soda kasi napakarami niyang gamit eh. Uh, it can be used as a whitener. Yan, pang tanggal ng odor. Yan, nagagamit natin si baking soda. Actually, nakakaputi rin si baking soda. Okay, so class, that's it. Now, your time to remember is to always clean with safety standards. Okay, now class, let's have our self-check 1.2, use it. Okay, now your pad paper, please. Please answer number one. Sweeping kitchen floor. What tools is that? Ginagamit sa pag mawalis ng floor. Okay, next, number two. Temporary storing refuse and waste. Saan nilalagay ang mga basura? Number three. Removing contaminants of any tools and equipment. Number four. Cleaning and maintaining non-carpeted floors such as hardwood, marble, tile, or linoleum. Number five. Cleaning the... Cleaning the glass surface of the water, dust, and our debris that stick on the glass... Next, number six, cleaning dirt and stains on the bathroom floor or wall. Collecting water and solvent cleaning, cleaning agents. Eight, otherwise known as the bicarbonate of soda or sodium bicarbonate is used to deodorize refrigerator. Okay. Next, number nine, bottle filled with a liquid chemical to spray. Fluid cleaning agents on the objects to be cleaned. Nandun na ang sagot, ha? Okay, next, number 10. Sucking off dust and dirt, usually from floors and optionally from other surfaces as well. Okay, now, class, let's have your what's more. Let's have our activity. Now, that was a lot of information, right? So, uh, you're bombarded with a lot of, of information. Now, can you feel your one step becoming a successful cook? Well, let's continue and find out by knowing what you understand on the topic. Now, class, on the third column, you will draw a smiley. Okay, again, I repeat. On the third column, you will draw a smiley if the statement of column 1 match the column 2. Now, if statement A and B are match, are match with each other, then you can put a smiley. But if not, if this uh, column 1, column A, and column 2 did not match, and then you will write your answer here. Okay? You will write your answer. Uh, class, no need for you to copy all of this, okay? Uh, you can see this on your module. Now, what you're going to do now is just, just need to number your papers 1 to 10. And then, for example, it is the most popular material used for tools, equipment, but it is more expensive. Is that aluminum? Okay. Now, if your answer is yes, it's aluminum, you will put a smiley. And if your answer is not, and then put on your answer. Okay. Next one, number two. It is greatly durable and cheap material of kitchen utensils, but may not last long. Is that glass? Okay, number three. Number four. Number five, number six, number seven, 
number eight, number nine, and number ten. Okay, now you're all done. Congratulations to that. Now, let's go on with activity 3.2 or name it. Now, fill in the appropriate um, answer in each box. Now, for example, we have here name of kitchen tools and equipment and paraphernalia, uses and function. Okay, for example, in this one, you will write here measuring cup or spoon. Okay, you will write there. Okay, what is its function or uses? You can say it is used. And right there, it is used to measure liquid and dry, measure liquid and dry ingredients. That's all. You will just need to answer this. Okay, class, remember, activity 3.2 has 20 points. Okay, 10 points for this and 10 points for its uses. Okay, clear? Okay, now let's have here your crossword puzzle. Now, class, I want you to copy this. Okay, I want you to have this one. But I have a correction. Um, Teddy nyo siyang meron kasi dito, this one, number three. Hindi kasi siya tatama sa three and four. So, I guess, uh, okay lang siya, basta ilagay niyo yung answer niyo dito. Okay, please copy the puzzle. So that I can understand that your writings much better. Kasi minsan ay nag-iiba-iba ang inyong sagot. Hindi nyo nalalagyan ng number. Eh, meron yung across and down. So, so kailangan, kailangan meron kayong kopya ng crossword, crossword puzzle. puzzle. Naintindihan po. Okay. Next, we have your class. So, what I can do? Now, activity 3.4 in our kitchen. Directions. Together with your parents and siblings, look for some tools, kitchen tools and equipment and paraphernalia. Also, cleaning tools and equipment found in your kitchen. Now, I want you to list them or capture them and describe them according to its use. Okay, class. So, kung ano yung makikita nyo sa bahay nyo na tools and equipment at panglinis, I just want you to list it down. Ma'am, gano po karami kahit pa isang daan? <laughs> okay, now, uh, kahit 10 lang, it, it will be okay kang hanggang... Sorry. Uh, okay lang siya, kahit hanggang 10 lang. Okay, okay na siya hanggang 10. Ayan. So, lista nyo lang siya dyan. And now, let's have this. What other enrichment activity can I engage in? Now, did you have fun in the activity? <laughs> Were you able to get 85? Now, if yes, please proceed to the next lesson. And if not, go over to the definition once more before you get the next lesson. Now, find the tools and equipment at your home that are not discussed in the module and give their uses. For example, meron kayo sa bahay nyo na tools and equipment na hindi ko naman na-discuss. You can write it here again. Ano, basta kung meron. If wala, okay lang din naman. Kasi, ang sabi dito ay equipment, tools and equipment at your home that are not discussed. Eh, kung na-discuss naman ni teacher lahat, so no need to answer letter E. Okay? Then, next one, let's have here what I have learned. Try remembering what you have learned by filling the blanks. If you want to cook a certain dish, you should blank with the correct utensils, devices, and equipment in the kitchen. Blank is the most popular material used for tools and equipment. On the other hand, cutting boards can be used wooden or plastic where meats and vegetables can be Okay, and in cutting, once referred to as a chef tool is? Okay, so you just need to answer that. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this should be four points. Okay, now let's have your activity 4.2. Share what you have learned in this lesson with your family. Now video yourself while you share your knowledge and skills. Demonstrate the proper use of five kitchen utensils, which preparing and cooking your meal and cleaning tools, which cle uh, cleaning tools while cleaning your kitchen. Okay? So kindly request your family members to write a comment about your performance and send your output to my messenger. So you already know my messenger account. Ano? So in activity 4.2, we have the share it. Ang gagawin nyo lang is video nyo yung self ninyo while using the five kitchen utensils or kung malilinis nyo yung pinag- um, 
pinaglutuan nyo, pwede kasi yung idiretso nyo na rin siya ng luto, ano, while performing. Para kayo sa Chef Boy Logro. And yeah, so, you will introduce the tools and equipment, and then you will cook. And after you cook, you will clean. But, But make, make sure, sure to, to video, video yourself. yourself. Okay? So, so activity 4.2 will be your performance task. Okay. Now, let's have here our post-test. Okay. So, post-test is, again, what I... What I discussed to you before I have my lesson, we have the pretest. Pretest and post-test are the same. But the difference is the pretest is a used so that I can assess if you already have the knowledge. But post-test, it is assessed if you learned something in this lesson. Okay? Now, class, congratulations. You finished the first lesson of this module. Rest for a while and you may start going through the next lesson. Keep on going. Good luck and happy learning. Again, this is Mama Yel Balasan from Bot National High School.